Hi guys, Breeze here. I currently work as a doctor in the NHS and here we are at the last lesson in your beginner's course on PLAB, where we're now going to talk about what happens after PLAB. If this is the first time you're checking out our channel, welcome. Basically what we do is we run a website that's totally free known as roadtouk.com and it will explain the ins and outs about everything related to the United Kingdom and what it takes for you to work as a doctor in the NHS. So if you've not already, please stalk us on all of our social media. Find us on Facebook, find us on Twitter, Instagram, and of course YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe. So congrats! You have passed PLAB 1, you passed PLAB 2, and now you are eligible to apply for a GMC registration. Hopefully you've also gotten your EPIC verification already done, and now you're thinking, well, what do I need for my GMC registration? Because once you have this registration, you're eligible to work in the United Kingdom as a doctor, which is fantastic. That's why you did all of this work. Now, you have your GMC online account. You've gone ahead and you've applied. You've told them everything. You've given them all your scores, and you've put in all the information that they would need to know about you and what you've been doing up until now. And you know what they're going to do after you submit that application? they're going to send you an email. Do not, do not, please, 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 do not just send them a bunch of things until they ask you for it. The reason is, like with anything in life, never say more than you need to say, never show more than you need to show. If GMC will look at your application and they're like, actually, we need a clarification on what you were doing during this time, can you please provide some proof, then go ahead and give it to them. If they don't ask you, don't give it. Keep it simple, okay? Some of the things that you may need, of course, are things like a certificate of good standing, like if you had registration in a country and you've worked there. So keep that handy. Um, I think the easiest way for you guys to really know what documents you may or may not need, because of course it will vary heavily on the individual, is if you check out the article that we've linked on documents or evidences that you would require for GMC registration, every person would have a different situation of what they would need to submit. Once you get your GMC registration, which if you've not got any entanglements and it's a pretty straightforward process for you, really doesn't take more than five working days, you're set. You can start applying for jobs and you can go crazy. If for some reason there is a minor hang up and you know, maybe you've got some gaps or you need some things explaining, GMC will talk to you every step of the way of what they want. Please tell the truth. Please provide them only what they ask. Okay. Don't get crazy and start sending them a ton of things. It'll just lengthen out the process because they'll be wondering, well, okay, we've asked for A, but you've sent A, B, and C, and we're very confused about why you've sent B and C when we only needed A. All right? If at any part of this process they refer your application to anyone or you're concerned about how long it's taking, don't worry. So many of us have gone through this process. GMC just really wants to know about what you've been doing, how you've been doing, and why you've been doing it. So just be patient. Even if after all of this, GMC says, you know what, we can't give you full GMC registration for whatever reason, they will still grant you provisional registration. Now, let's talk about what you can do with the different types of GMC registration. So if you guys remember, I did talk about the provisional and full GMC registration. If you have provisional GMC registration, this means you can't just go apply for a non-training job because in the eyes of the General Medical Council, you can't work by yourself or in a situation basically where you're not fully supervised and fully you know seen and known about what you're doing outside of a training program. So your two options in that situation would be to either complete an acceptable pattern of internship back in your home country or apply for the United Kingdom internship which is known as the United Kingdom Foundation Program or UKFP. It is a pretty competitive process but it doesn't mean international medical graduates cannot apply we have an article talking about internships and what are the acceptable criteria, as well as the timeline outlining if you were to apply for the UKFPO, what you would need to know and when you should plan for it. Please keep in mind, if you miss the deadline to apply for UKFP, you have to wait until the next year. There are no other ways to get into it throughout the year otherwise. So if you've already missed it, depending on where you are in your journey, think about doing an internship back in your home country that would meet the acceptable criteria or you would have to wait until the application opens up the next year. Now, if you've already been granted full GMC registration, you can think about one of two things. You can either think about applying for a non-training job, which you can apply through NHS jobs year round. There is no specific time of the year that those jobs are open or closed. They are there all the time. Even if you were to go right now and type in 
you know, nhsjobs.com, you can see all the jobs that are available there. And your other option would be to apply for a training job. Now, take what I'm saying with a grain of salt, but think about it. We don't really recommend jumping into a training post, especially a training post that is actually a specialty training or any th sort of actually, you know, guidance trained towards a certain specialty um, training post from the get-go, mainly because you don't know how the NHS works. I'm sure you've got a ton of experience. I'm sure you know exactly what you want to do and how you want to get that way and that you're really well trained in that specialty. But the NHS is a new healthcare system. There are a lot of ins and outs that you're not sure of and you may not even be fully aware of what your roles would entail because of that. So if you did want to start out in a training post, there is an option known as an FY2 standalone, which we've talked about in a video that you can look into and in a couple of articles. But the FY2 standalone is a rotational post. Basically, the way that internship in the United Kingdom is set up is it's two years. There's an FY1 and an FY2 year. In your FY2 year, if for some reason they have some gaps in certain hospitals, they will recruit doctors to come and work. So you could, technically speaking, apply for an FY2 standalone just on passing PLAB1 alone as per their application criteria but you need to have GMC registration by the time the post were to start. So that's something you can think about if your timeline matches up. Now, when I said it was a rotational post, that means when you are basically seeing the posts available, you can't just say, no, I only want to do general medicine or I only want to do renal medicine. No, the posts will be for whatever that they need filled. So it could be that you would have a rotation in geriatric medicine, a rotation in trauma and orthopedics, or then finally a rotation in psychiatry. So if that's something that you think you want to do because maybe you're not sure about what type of you know, specialty you'd want to pursue or maybe you just want to get a feel of what it would be like to work in those positions um, at that level, you can think about a standalone. Otherwise, if you want to directly apply for training, there are a lot of considerations that are beyond the scope of this video. Um, and again, like I said, it's not something that we would recommend, but if you want to do it, please, please be very certain you think it's a good idea. There is nothing wrong in starting out in the United Kingdom in a non-training job. It doesn't make you any less of a doctor. You aren't paid less. You aren't treated any differently. You can still understand whatever you need to know about the United Kingdom and the NHS in a non-training job. And once you feel you know confident and you qualify to apply for a training post, by all means, apply for a training post. I also want to take this moment, and I know it's not really within the scope of this video, but I do want to say, guys, even if you decide at no point in your future do you want to apply for training in the NHS, that's okay. You can take a non-training job and continue to work in the NHS, and no one will tell you anything that you need to get into training, or you need to do this, or you need to do that. It's in your hands how you want to proceed and how you want to make your NHS journey after you've completed PLAB. So don't think at any moment or time that you have to do something that you don't feel up to doing. So that about wraps up this entire course about you understanding PLAB and what it means for you in the long run. Now if you've gotten here and you've understood everything that you wanted to know guys, I would recommend two more courses from our lovely, lovely Road to UK Academy. The first course would be how to apply for jobs in the NHS, which will tell you, guess what? How to apply for jobs in the NHS. It's a fantastic course. Highly recommend if you are very confused about the entire process, especially about what you want to put in your job application. And then after that, you should consider checking out our course on the CREST form and portfolio. CREST being your certificate of readiness to enter specialty training. So if you need to know how to enter training and what will be asked of you along the way, check out that course where we talk about everything, literally everything that you would need to know to make yourself an awesome portfolio so that you can really be up to the mark when you are applying for training. Until next time, guys, though, if you haven't already, like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and just generally be awesome and watch all of our videos. Thanks.